The history of the rocking chair is filled with ups and downs. Well, uh, really more like backs and forths. You uh, historians in the audience probably know that some 250 years ago, Ben Franklin fastened some curved wood to an old slat-backed chair and turned that otherwise uncomfortable contrivance into a new invention, the rocking chair. Well, over the years, the rocker has had its ups and downs. A decline in popularity in the 1950s for the rocker was offset by uh, the election in 1960 of President John Kennedy, who extolled the virtues of the rocker to all comers. Nowadays, you can go in any furniture store and you'll find an array of rockers like you've never seen before at prices ranging from high to low. And perhaps the rocker has reached its pinnacle of success here in Richardson, where they're about to kick off their first annual Rockathon as part of the Richardson Centennial Celebration. One of the participants in that rocking chair marathon is Mrs. Elizabeth Espeset. And uh, Ms. Espeth said, I, I'm wondering, is there a, a right way and a wrong way to rock in a chair? Oh, it's a matter of individual preference. There are some people who rock vigorously, and there are some people who just like to just barely move in a rocking chair. What are some of the traits that you find in people who uh, gravitate to rocking chairs? Are they lazy or, or what? Well, um... I like to say relaxed rather than lazy. But one reason that I like a rocking chair is because you make an inviting lap. If you're sitting in a rocking chair, uh, a child knows that you're available to him. And uh, there are too few laps anymore. Almost everybody's running around all the time. And it's, it's um, I, I think rocking in a rocking chair is a way to say I'm taking time out and relaxing, and uh, if this is laziness, I plead guilty. <laughs> ah, what a pastime. Perhaps what this country needs is more rockers and less swingers. Arch Campbell, News 8 on the Move, in the arms of Morpheus.